I run a New Zealand office in New Zealand, uh, in Auckland, and it's uh, we call it a temple or a centre or a Japanese word to shibu, and it's uh, you know it's a nice little two-storey building. It's got a lovely energy about it. The people who are members of Happy Science to come there all say how nice it is to come to the centre, and they really enjoy the meditation, and they they can feel the difference in the energy there. Uh, immediately when they're meditating and even just when they come people just say what a wonderful energy they feel there but uh, you know there's no comparison to here every physical sensation as well as just being a tourist exactly. when you're sitting in a temple it's you're in, in the presence of God it's so thick you know it's so, it's so you know it's there so much that you feel like you could cut through the atmosphere with a with a knife, and it's a feeling of bliss. It's a feeling of bliss. It's indescribable, really, until a person experiences it. It's one of those things, you know, that uh, beyond this world. So, for anybody who uh, gets an opportunity to come to Happy Science Temple, uh, they all experience it themselves, guaranteed, guaranteed. Yeah. Really powerful. Yeah. Uh, normally, when I'm, I'm sitting in a temple, I can feel really warm hands and face, sometimes in the, in the body. But sitting in here before, it was, I could feel it in my toes. The whole body was just tingling. You know, beyond this world, there's another world, the spirit world. And so, because the spirit world exists, when we come to a temple, we're within uh, a realm that's being created with a special vibration with high spirits creating a heavenly place. So even though you can't see them, you can certainly feel the presence. And uh, by, the, by the lifting up of happiness in the heart. And Tokyo, Osaka, Tokushima, uh, Nikko, uh, Masu, Murakai, I can't remember what I went to this afternoon. My <laughs> hands just getting too much. Every single one has a totally different ambience around it. And that comes down, they all do have a different energy, all the temples have a different energy and the reason for that is just what I was mentioning before, how the, uh, the temples aren't just a physical building, they have a spiritual entity that's responsible for creating that energy. So depending on the spiritual entity from the highest dimensions that's responsible for that uh, building, or for that temple, for that sacred space, the energy from that uh, from that being is, is what we feel. They're all my favorites, you know. I mean, you know, when you look at it, oh, it's the same atmosphere, the same, oh, you know, uh, what's in one is in all. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's because it's peace, love, you know, and I'm very much impressed with the overall over a hundred percent. I'm very much impressed with everything, you know, the members, how they treat the, the foreign people, foreigners that come here. I mean, they're all welcome. Everybody's like a family, you know. For instance, we've just been training at one air called uh, Nikko. And at Nikko, it's, uh, it's a very much uh, like a Shakyamuni Buddha style type uh, energy that's there. So it's uh, you know, strong on uh, discipline and self-reflection. So when a person goes there, they just feel the desire to reflect on themselves and think about their lives. And that's because the energy that's looking after the temple and protecting that zone, that's what that energy embodies. And so uh, that's, uh, that's what we tend to do when we suddenly start to think about ourselves and our lives and how we can improve ourselves and if we've got some shortcomings that we need to, uh, need to uh, address, it helps us. And I mean, this is one of the, the essence of the teaching of Happy Science that, uh, as I said before, we've got the other world, the spiritual world. Well, you know, from the teachings of Happy Science, we come here for the purpose of training the developed soul. Uh, and often we don't see the, the sp uh, shortfalls or things of ourselves. We tend to see other people's, but not our own. But when we go to a place like a Nikko with a self-reflection element, we really see, wow, uh, and, and we get, then we can change ourselves, and it improves our lives in so many ways. You know, we feel happier, and not only that, the people around us enjoy us more, so therefore we have better relations, so our job goes better, our relationships with our partners go better, everything goes better. When we go to another um, uh, temple, such as the one we're in here right now, which is at uh, Miraikan, 
And this one's more about progress, uh, more of the Hermes type rather than the Shakyamuni Buddha style, a Hermes style. And Hermes is all about uh, love and progress. So when we come in here, we uh, start to feel, uh, you know, wanting to help uh, improve uh, our lives and help improve the world and what we can help to develop the world and develop ourselves from uh, from that perspective. So uh, and uh, you know, I mean, from my master Okawa's teachings, really development means development of love or increase of love. So there's always a, the love element to it, expansion of love, and uh, so. Through that, uh, through the development that you experience at, at Mid Icon, then you can actually um, really improve your relationships with people through knowing how to love more. You know, it teaches about love, and uh, so all of the different centers have got different aspects to them in their training. So, yeah, that's why there's a different feel. If you go to one temple, to the next, to the next, it's quite astounding the different feel, feel that there is. But. Uh, it's just as Master Okawa teaches also, each one of us have within us a diamond and, uh, and our soul training is about polishing our diamond and cutting our diamond and giving the different facets. So by visiting the different temples, there's a different part of yourself that you can polish that part of your diamond and polish this part of your diamond because we want to be a nice, well balanced diamond. You know, the diamond shines because of all the facets that have been cut out of it. These are very different to branch offices. Branch offices are, are good for a little mini recharge of your event. But if you want a, a double whammy, you've got to go to the tent. There's, there's no other way to do it. So uh, we're talking about the, uh, the prayer rooms. Each temple has a main prayer room. And uh, you know, one of the, part of the, the, the uh, rules of the, of the temples are we're not allowed to photograph or video in the, in the rooms because these are the sacred centre, the heart of the temple. And each one of the, uh, each one of the temples in its main prayer room has a wonderful statue or gohonzo, which represents actually the element or the aspect of that temple, which is, as we're just talking about, each temple has its own character, its own uh, particular type of discipline that they practice, whether it be a Shakyamuni Buddha style or a Hermi style. But so each uh, temple has uh, this, so there's actually a statue that represents the heart of that style of teaching in that temple. Uh, the one in here, for instance, it's a huge, wonderful, wonderful statue of like a Hermes. Yeah, the statues themselves, uh, people say a statue is a statue, but uh, it's, it's more than that. And, the, and the, the designers of the statues, well, they are definitely uh, inspired by divinity because the beauty of the statues and what's behind them. You can look at the statue and see that and there's so much going on in the statue from the Buddha statues, the Hermes statues, all the, the great Dharma wheel that exists at Tokyo Shoshinkan with the pearl of wisdom in the middle of it. Do I have any tips for people wanting to travel temples? Um, yeah. Take a bike. <laughs> but make sure you have adequate amount of money that you can at least could take you around and make you feel comfortable. Don't, don't be afraid. Have faith. You know, have faith. When I first uh, discovered happy science and I left New Zealand, I just, uh, I believed that this teaching was true. I believed that Master Okawa was a reincarnation of the Buddha. I decided to just leave my place. I put a pack on my back. I came to Japan and I just, and I'm so glad that I, I followed my heart. So I'm not saying everybody should do that, but maybe you know I'm saying if you if you do think that maybe you want to come and have a look, if you're worried about oh what will I do when I get here I can't speak English or you know what happens I might be stuck or whatever, don't worry, don't worry, have faith, you'll be looked after. Just come with an open mind. People should just come with an open mind and see for themselves.